Good game, man. Really good game. Like I said to Martinelli. Hello, Antonio. Nice to see you again. Hello, good afternoon. It's gone through La Porte. Rodri! Dieser Lewandowski-Auftritt sorgt für Wirbel. Welcome, welcome to the Lesso Football TV uh, Monday Night Football Chat Podcast. It's number seven, actually. And it's good evening to all of you guys. And yeah, obviously, I've got my usual guests with me, Sims and Mesh. Um, um, finally, finally, finally. Um, yeah, guys, um, how, was your, how was your weekend, guys? Uh, did you enjoy the long weekend? Yeah, man. Uh, enjoy the weekend. At least there was no disappointment of a Man United. So you, you actually get to enjoy a weekend because you're not pissed off, you know, of whatever happened. Even though the result that happened during the, the weekend Vele was upsetting. Uh, but at least it wasn't our team messing up. It, yeah, they've messed up already. But yeah, feeling down because they messed up, let's say, today or day before. We didn't have that. So yeah. Was you enjoyed even today, even though it was a cold one, stayed in a lot because yeah, it was a cold weather. But I yeah, it was good. Hope yours was good as well. Awesome stuff. Uh, Mesh, how was your weekend? Yeah, the weekend was good, man. Although there wasn't much um, um, premiership football, uh, there was some FA Cup ties. Uh, so yeah, there were a few games on Saturday and about two uh, yesterday. Uh, but yeah, we got to watch the big game yesterday as well, the um, El Clasico. Uh, but yeah, um, nonetheless, it was a good weekend. Rested, uh, yeah, but we're back again, yeah. Now, nah, good stuff, gents. Um, obviously, we know we had a few Premier League games that took place, uh, yes, um, over the weekend. And because there was also FA Cup um, matches as well. Um, and teams, it's it's only because also teams were had game in hands that they had to like uh, catch up with. So um, obviously, you know, the, over the weekend there was the Arsenal game, there was the Tottenham, uh, the Spurs game as well, and then in the FA Cup, all the uh, the, the three big teams, Chelsea, Liverpool, and Man City played. So, but then we're gonna start with the with the Premier League. Um, Obviously, it's the Arsenal game versus Aston Villa. And did you guys manage to to watch it? Uh, Sims, by the way, did you manage to catch the game? Um, I didn't actually catch the game, but I was following the results. And um, yeah, I was very pissed off that they won because I wanted I wanted them to drop as many points as they can with the game in hand uh, that they that they have. But they, they seem to be just pushing. There's no stopping for them. So, yeah, when I saw that they won one nil, I was like, ah, it was a close one. But Aston Villa, as big as they are in terms of how good they've played since uh, Jared got there, but uh, they couldn't beat them. So now they are above us. Tottenham as well is above us. So this is what I was talking about. Being, you know, having a great weekend, but then still realizing that for your team, it's a mess. So, yeah, it wasn't it was a good result for them. But uh, not for us. Uh, yeah, and Mesh, by the way, um, you know, it's a great. It was a great game for Arsenal. You know, I mean, they the, the, they got the important victory and Saka scoring in the thirtieth minute. And you know, prior to that, Arsenal lost to Man City. You know, and for basically for them it was like the most crucial victory they could get at, the, at that time and point and and important for them to get back into the champions league and you know do you feel that the top four race is over now uh with arsenal uh, getting it now because i don't i honestly don't see any more any team that's more consistent than them even though spurs have also got a good result but what did you think of the game overall my man uh, I wouldn't say the, the top four race over, you know, there's still a lot of football to play. Uh, but what I can tell you is that Arsenal has built 
good momentum. Um, looking at they played Leno uh, this past weekend. Ramsdale took um, a break, but they still got a clean sheet. So their defense, um, they won one nil. Um, it, it's it's kind of what we always say with our team that we we play your minor teams, but we still get um, we concede goals. So um, Arsenal is getting uh, clean sheets. They're winning one nil, three points, important points. I guess the likes of Aston Villa, which um, almost came back against West Ham um, la- the last week. Yeah, Man City was a, 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 a Liverpool tie was was tough for, for for Arsenal, but yeah, they came back against Aston Villa three important point like simp is um just said they they're actually running away with that fourth position but yeah there's still a lot of football to play well we can only hope but arsenal look very good to be in the top four because they're very consistent and at a very uh crucial stage no good stuff man uh by the way uh welcome to the show so so you just joined us now we're actually discussing the the arsenal game versus west um uh, versus uh, West Ham, which they got the 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 one nil um, victory over. So, what did you think of the game, man? And what did you think of the result for Arsenal? Does it mean top four is over, or do you still think Man United will somehow, or any other team will somehow get to the top four instead of Arsenal? I think for having me now again, man. And how are you, James? I hope you guys are not experiencing network issues like me. Yeah. Okay, so James, uh, for me, when it comes to Arsenal, I feel like Manchester United they still have a chance to grab the top four. But Arsenal, they always they find a way to to let's say to to lose points. But right now, I know they are in, they are currently playing well. They've seen sheet, yeah, and they are, they are packing the pass very well this day. So. Yeah, but I, I do believe in Manchester United because we can we can still get that top four position. Because we know, man, with young stars, you want you do win something, you do win things. But uh, for us, we are experienced enough. So even last season, we were able to take Leicester out out of the fourth position. So and besides, this is the Premier League. Anything can happen. Arsenal can draw three games and then we can win three games and then who made the top four position. So, yeah, I do believe that we still have a chance as a Manchester United fan, yeah. Maybe the chance uh, or something, maybe, if you want to dispute. <laughs> I mean, Sims, what do you think about what, what Celso said? They, uh, I mean, he still thinks somehow Arsenal are going to blow this top four uh, race wide open again. Well... I can understand, you know, what, what he's saying because of we've seen we've seen it before when it comes to your Man United. Uh, there will be certain moments where we're like they are out, even if it's not performing or not fighting for trophies, but to at least get the top four, they've always had enough to do that. And I feel like they do have enough, but it's up to them to see if they're gonna use what they have and actually get themselves to top four. So I agree with him there that there's still a chance. I mean. Um, right now, Arsenal is what four points above us. Those is only is only two games, and we're still gonna play Arsenal. So if you win against them, they still to play the the top three as well. So we both still need to play the, the top three. So if we manage to beat the top three, and then maybe they lose two games or even more, they may crumble. So he's right there. So yeah, I'm just hoping that it does go that way. Uh, and to also to add on Sims, yeah, because Arsenal have ju- I checked their games, so they still have big games to play, and they're going to play against Crystal at home. Crystal Palace, yeah, they're playing very well these days under Patrick Vieira, and they still have to play Brighton, Southampton. So away, away game against Southampton. So there's still a good chance for us to to get that fourth position, because they and to add on that, we still have to play on them with Arsenal and. Still have a key. Arsenal, they're still going to play against Chelsea away. So yeah, I feel like we do have a good chance to to get the the fourth position. And also they're, they're going to play away against Newcastle in the last two games. So yeah, there's a huge chance for us, man, because Arsenal, we know they, they can blow that fourth position wide open. 
Um, obviously, before I move on to the next game, uh, Mesh, do you have anything to add quickly? <laughs> nah, I'm just uh, just to be objective. Um, and I'm a Man United fan, but looking at how Arsenal has been very consistent and versus us, we're very hopeful. Looking at Arsenal, um, Arsenal might lose a game or two, yes, but are we going to take advantage of that? It remains to be seen. Yeah, so the top four uh, race, like I said, is not over, but obviously. Um, We'll, we'll have to take our own uh, games as well, win our own games, apart from Arsenal losing. But yeah, that looks less likely. But yeah, we'll see. Yeah, man. Um, uh, great points across, guys. Um, obviously, the next game is the Tottenham and West uh, West Ham, uh, which was also pivotal for this top four race. Um, Tottenham, again, you know, getting a second win in, in, in the same week. Um, they obviously won against Brighton during the week, uh, 2-0. Now they've won 3-1 against West Ham. Um, they're starting to build this consistent momentum. And it's 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 kind of, hey, you know, obviously we're going to write them off because they Spurs. We know Spurs are bottle jobs. But, you know, in this case, it's it's looking like, yeah, that they might even finish ahead of Manchester United. So um, um, what did you guys think about the, the, the game against West Ham? And um, obviously, I'm going to start this time. I'm going to start with Sims, and then I'm going to move to Gemini, and then I'm going to move to Mesh. But yeah, Sims, uh, take it away. Hey, you know, um, was this Tottenham uh, experiencing what we were supposed to experience, or maybe even better if we had gotten Conte? You know, Conte is the type of, of coach we've seen time and time again uh, wherever he goes, he did it with Chelsea in a space of like a short time. He did it with Chelsea, went to Tottenham, did it with Tottenham, did it with Juventus, you know, um, uh, and Inter Milan. I mean, he's he's just starting to do it with, with uh, Tottenham now, but he, he keeps showing it. And if we had such a coach who has presence, I feel like we would be in a better position, but yeah, um, yeah, like you, like you've said, they've built quite a very consistent uh run. Because what, what he says, they then try and improve. Because I've been seeing a lot of um, things, even articles or whatever, of him saying he be putting all his hope on people like Sun and Kane to get him to the top four. And you can see with how they are performing that, you know, that's the plan. Because they're really pushing. And beating a West Ham, I mean, a West Ham is not such a small team. I think we're still to play West Ham and we might even lose because you know i'm in united you know so at this stage we were counting west ham as a team that will be on the top four and they beat them 3-1 you know the players that they picked up in the transfer in the transfer you know are working for them while with us it's like it's, it's always i don't know with us it's always a confusion we're supposed to get a player that will, will help us but i so tottenham are very consistent sun is playing more kane is scoring more you know, he's assisting as well. So when you have those players and then you have people like Kulosevsky and Petaku who just came in assisting, it's like they, they, they didn't just buy them now. So it's very easy for them because, because of Conte. He has that presence. So I feel like I, they'll get in easily to the top four because we've really messed up already. So if they consistently play like this, you know, if they, do, they decide not to drop points, there's no chance for us. Because, I mean, I know we, we beat Tottenham, but the thing is, as much as we've beat them, it doesn't mean anything at the end of the day if they uh, hold hold the lead, even if it's one point, until the end of the season. If they they not if they decide we are not losing anything, then it's done with us. Already Arsenal has four points. Tottenham is one point ahead of us. So we don't really need to, even if we win all, all the rest of our games, already we've messed up. Yeah, man. Uh, Celso, what did you think, man? I mean, uh, Tottenham, you know, that 53% pos- uh, position, you know, um, that 17 shots and goal, that four shots on target, sure. you know. Yeah. Um, so it was, it's, it was a dominant game. You know, it was a dominant display from them. And, you know, against the West Ham side, um, that is, isn't a bad team at all. So um, what did you think about the game? I, I was watching the game actually on Saturday. Um, and you know, when it comes to Spurs, it was yesterday, I think it was yesterday's game. Uh, you know, when it comes to Spurs, man, uh, what Conte did, uh, it's amazing because 
I, I thought that first this season they were gonna finish top eight. After after what what happened when they stepped no no, and then they put an assistant, yeah, an interim coach, and they were busy messing up there. So to bring and Conte just came there, fixed everything, came January, got two good signings. Yeah, even though some signings you couldn't get, but Kulisevsky and Bentako, those guys are really helping fast. And even credit to Conte, because, man, his style of play, man, everywhere he goes, he sticks to his philosophy, his style of play, and, and, and it becomes dominant, and they win games. So check, uh, even when it comes, even like players like Ryan Sessler now they're playing, because he, he wants like fullback. And these fullbacks, they were, he, he started playing when he used a lot of fullbacks. And those fullbacks, they're really working very well for his philosophy. So, yeah, credit mm-hmm. to Conte because uh, he is really changing space now. And Kane is back on form, so on. And they, they have a good link up play now, like last season when, when, when they were under Mourinho. Yeah, so, I, like I say, man, Conte he did. A good job when it comes to Tottenham Hotspur, like 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 what he has done to Chelsea, and yeah, and if there's if if we don't get a chance for the fourth position, I think Spurs they can get it because now they're becoming very consistent. They're winning games, and now they have a good identity when it, when it comes to to their style of play. Yeah, so Ashman, yeah, what what like Sim said, man, we if. Man, Man United got content before Spurs. Maybe we could be at top three right now because what he does to players and in the changing room, it shows that Conte is a good leader. And and also he he's yeah it's something that I want to add. Like he when it comes to his training for training style, so it shows that he want players who are hard workers because. If you can check Regulon, he wasn't playing that well. He was he was like he, he was playing like a, a lazy player. There was no hard work in him. But now after Conde came in, he's going forward, going back. Like he's becoming like a proper wing back where when he was playing at Sevilla. Sevilla, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. When he was playing at Sevilla. And also he bought Mark Doherty and he's playing very well now. So yeah, I feel like man, if you have a manager like Conte. Man, uh, you can win anything, man. I eh? so his his style and his philosophy is very it's very good. And we, team win games with that style of play. And also check at Spurs, what Spurs are doing now. They're winning game, they're dominating, and and now they they are they're starting playing that attractive football. Cause I hey, mean, in the past few games, like ten in the first. 10 games in the Premier League, man. I suppose they were playing that boring football. You couldn't even watch it for 15 minutes. But now under Conte, man, they're playing like attractive football, wing back bombing forward. K now is happy now. He's scoring, he's assisting Stone. They're very influential. And after he added like Benta Kou and Kulisevs, like Tim said, now they're, they're performing very well now. So, yeah, credit to Conte and... Yeah, Spurs. Yeah, I mean, Spurs are playing very nice football right now. No, awesome stuff, man. Um, obviously, Mesh, I'm gonna leave it to you to to like obviously finish off um with the Spurs uh game and versus West Ham. And uh, what did you think? You know, I mean, uh, song two goals assisted by both assisted by Harry Kane. And it looks like they they they, they got back their the their partnership is working again. So um, what did you think about the game? Yeah, that uh, uh, Son and Kate partnership doesn't seem to uh, have an end, eh? Uh, a bit, uh, uh, but going into the game, uh, Spurs were actually um, tipped to be obviously having an advantage. West Ham was playing Sevilla on the Europa Cup uh, on mm-hmm. Thursday. And then Tottenham played Brighton on on a Wednesday. So going into that game on Sunday yesterday, um, yeah, Spurs were actually um, the favourites, if I can say, because uh, West Ham played Sevilla 120 minutes uh, with the Ukrainian Yamalenko coming to the rescue again. But yeah, yesterday's game, um, yeah, 
West Ham, I think, because of the 120 minutes they played against Sevilla, it took a lot uh, from them on Thursday. And um, mm-hmm. Spurs sort of like had a, an, an, an easier game compared to, I mean, West Ham considering three goals, it's, it's, it's unheard of because uh, they haven't been considering those many goals. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, Spurs, um, I think also what they wanted to do is just to end the... Going into the international break with the with the win, like you mentioned, they got three points against Brighton in the midweek, and they got another three points. It's a it's a good step for them, uh, fighting that uh, top four places. Yeah, European places is is very crazy because Man United didn't play, and they find themselves going from fourth position to sixth position, and it's uh, very tough for them. Yeah, but good for Spurs. Like they also mentioned, Conte, I think is. Getting momentum with uh, Kulasevsky and uh, Bento Kool, the players from Juventus coming into this, they putting some some work on them, and they seem to be the fans' favorite now. And it's going to be interesting going into the next games after the international break. We'll see. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, obviously, um, I'm gonna add a little bit of extra, obviously, because um, FA Cup, um, we can't ignore the FA Cup because it also took place. Um, besides the league uh, games over the weekend. Um, all victories for Chelsea, Liverpool, Man City. So all three teams are, uh, um, you know, more likely going into the next round. Um, the, obviously, we started off with Chelsea beating Middlesbrough in the sixth round of the FA Cup. Um, Chelsea, again, reaching the later stages of, of another cup competition. Um, what did you guys think about that victory uh, for Chelsea, Chelsea against Middlesbrough in the FA Cup? I'm going to start with... Um, I'll start with Sims and then I'll go again the same in the same direction. Sims. Well, Sims. I, I, yeah, 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 man. Well, I, with Chelsea winning that one again, it's one of those things, man. And... I mean, Man United hasn't gotten a run of any, well, besides the Europa that they messed up again, but in England, they haven't gotten a long run of any uh, trophy because we got knocked up by Chelsea, I think Carabao Cup, you know. So uh, Chelsea is always consistent. The Chelsea, Liverpool, and Man City, they are always in, the, in those types. So, with, uh, yeah, we're looking at Chelsea, it was, you know, sort of obvious because at the moment, what they're trying to do is, uh, playing football and not listening to the ro- noise around them, and it seems it, it seems to be working because even the coach you hear you you hear him even the players saying you know we're focusing on football we're going to win and Man C- Man City you know Pep would always tell you no player of mine will look at the certain trophy as uh, a small type of trophy you go for everything even Carabao Cup you, he said that he doesn't care a trophy that is played for they go for it. So now uh, it's always a pity because now we're out of everything as a Man United. I mean, I know it's it's focusing on FA Cup, but it's it's quite sad having to you know now focus on the rest of the trophies that our English teams can play for, and we're not there. But yeah, it's it's gonna be hard to see who's gonna win it because I mean all those teams are in the Champions League, so they have so much to play for. The two are playing for the league. Um, Chelsea, I think they are settled, settled enough to stay in the top four. And then, yeah, Man City now and Liverpool again in the FA Cup. You know, we'll see how far it gets, but yeah, it's going to be, yeah. Yeah, man. And obviously, um, I'll come to you now, so Um, obviously, with, with Mount um, getting two assists in the game and Lukaku, both Lukaku and Zia getting on the score sheet for Chelsea. And, you know, Chelsea were just literally showing, like, that they, they have squad depth. You know, they can rest players. And, you know, that's what's helping them to, to compete in, in different, uh, for different competitions. So, man, what did you think? You know, what do you think of Chelsea's season so far and this victory? Celso, are you still there, bro? <laughs> sure, bro, yeah. Yeah, man, like you said, man, you know, when it comes to Chelsea, uh, they have a good squad depth, man, and they rotate, yeah, like Tuchel is, is rotating the squad perfectly because, man, last week they, pay, they played Kai Havertz in the league, they won, they changed a little bit on the squad, 
they put Lukaku now and Ziyech, Mount. So and it seems like every player that he takes out or he changes or go, he plays in the starting lineup, they all deliver. So I'm not surprised seeing Chelsea in every cup competition because, man, they have quality players. The squad depth and the coach, he rotates the squad perfectly. And he doesn't rush youngsters. He introduces them uh, like game by game. Like, look at Sa now. He's playing very well. And they have Chelomba. So, yeah, I mean, all in all, Chelsea, man, if, when it comes to every competition, I guarantee that they will always be there because their squad depth, man, is very, 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 very strong. And they have quality players. And, yeah, and that's why, that's why they will still dominate, like, Many, in many cups because the quality that they have managed and the quality that they have they will dominate every game and come next three to five seasons man you're still gonna win something because i do believe that chelsea this season they will win something maybe they can win the champions league or fa cup because of the squad depth yeah but i see great things when it comes to uh, the squad and and people were saying that media's brought, they were going to do a shock, like they were going to beat Chelsea, like, or maybe they were anticipating that maybe they can beat Chelsea, like they did to us. But Chelsea, man, it was quite, kind of obvious for them to win this game. Sure. Um, I'm obviously going to move to Mesh, man. Uh, Mesh, um, Chelsea 61 position uh, percentage, uh, 11 shots on goal, shots on target for. Corners five, you know, it was a dominant display again, you know, the, and, and it's it's not even an attacking uh, prowess that they showed, but it's also defensively because not, um, Middlesbrough didn't even get a shot on target the whole 90 minutes. <laughs> so, um, yeah, man, uh, please uh, do elaborate on, on, on uh, what you think of Chelsea and, you know, how they, 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 they their season has unfolded. Yeah, and of course, um, we kind of know uh, going into the game um, after the Chelsea saga, um, Chelsea actually wanted that game to be played behind uh, closed doors because some of their fans weren't able to now buy tickets anymore. But then uh, Middlesbrough actually responded by saying, um, um, yeah, Chelsea shouldn't talk about integrity. So yeah, uh, there was a lot of drama going into the game. Um, and then obviously Middlesbrough having beaten Man United on penalties and then also Tottenham. So they actually fancied their chances going into uh, uh, thinking they'll get another scalp of, uh, of big guns. But yeah, uh, with Chelsea, like Celso is saying, Chelsea has been very solid since Thomas Tuchel came in. Uh, defensively, I mean... We still go back to the Champions League final last year where they beat um, um, Man City 1-0. They were very defensive or rather the defensive structure is one thing that is, is their strong point now. So it's no surprise that Middlebrook didn't get any much chances. But yeah, um, what happens outside the, the field doesn't seem to be affecting the, the players. But uh, did Thomas Tuchel did say that uh, they're going to play their part. Uh, whatever happens outside the field, they do their part inside the field. So, yeah, great display by Chelsea, dominant. Um, last four, it's them, Man City, Liverpool, and uh, Crystal Palace. Yeah, we'll wait to see who goes up against who. Now, awesome stuff, man. Um, obviously, the next, uh, the, 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 game, the games that took place on Sunday in the FA Cup, where Liverpool, Man City, uh, both who got their victories and they're all away, funny enough. <laughs> they all played away games. So um, obviously I'm going to quickly brief uh, with the Liverpool. I want a quick brief from you guys in terms of the Liverpool and Man City game. Liverpool, let's start off with the Liverpool one. Um, they beat Nottingham Forest um, 1-0. Nottingham Forest have been doing well, but you know, um, obviously they met their match because... You know, your likes of Liverpool with Klopp, they've, they, they, they know how to rotate. You know, they, they, they've mastered the way of rotating. And obviously, Jota getting his um, goal, you know, um, Liverpool just, you know, just got over the line, sort of, you know. Um, obviously, I'll start with Sims to tell me how, what he thinks about Liverpool this season and what they've been doing and their victory, obviously, in this game. Yeah, man. Uh, Liverpool. Liverpool, they might not be the, a well-run uh, team in terms of funding and, you know, money. That is 
targeted for you know recruiting players um but they still recruit very well and that's why they, they've been at the top uh, for this long they keep getting players that they just pick up and then those players link nicely with their team like they've been playing for for years Jota started playing for Liverpool he was scoring goals and same with Luis Diaz scoring goals assisting so like you said those are teams that can rotate their squad even those players you don't look at as important they they know how to use them every player that plays for Liverpool knows that I'll go uh, into the, the the team even if I haven't I haven't played in the last five games but they know uh, what is needed from them they get in there they do it you know if it was a kid you get your star they sort it so th- this is the thing with, with you know with the Liverpool a great coach and then one side, you know, good players. The way they choose their players, they choose their players to fit their team. They know what they're going for. Not, you know, teams that just buy for the sake of buying. So it makes it easy, even with, you know, the bulk of their squad when they have to rotate. You know, so beating Notting- Nottingham Forest, because, yeah, like you said, they've been doing good uh, with one of our low-knee players, or Ga- Ghana. So they've been doing very good winning. And I thought, you know, they'll go far, but well. Like you said, they met they met their match with Liverpool. You know, Liverpool just knows just know how to win. No matter what trophy, what game they playing, club just knows how to set up a team and go for a win. And it makes it easy going forward for whatever trophy that your team uh, goes for, because they respect him and uh, understand what what is he's saying and coaching them. Makes it easy to just have a team. No matter which player comes in, they'll do the same thing. So, yeah, I feel like they might even win the league. They're just, you know, they still to play Man City. And once they beat Man City, it's, it's up to them what they decide, how they play. They're still in the Champions League. If they play their cards right, they can't even win a treble. As much as you want to call it a treble, but they have it in them with the squad that they have to probably win the FA Cup, uh, get, get the league, win the, the Champions League. It's easy for them. You know, they have the players and... I, I mean, I know uh, maybe I'm exaggerating by saying easy, but they're, they're very, very, very well run, like a well owned machine, the way they're working. Every season, unless if there's one player that, that, that got, uh, gets injured, like Van Dijk, but they know what they're doing. So as they go and play, a match can start and let's say first half they're losing 2 0. You can never write them off. That's the type of team that Liverpool is. You can never write them off because at the end of the day, they can win 3 2 or 4 2, you know. So, I foresee them winning a trophy or two this season with how they've been doing. You on mute, bro. You on mute. Yes, man. <laughs> I'm not used to this muting. But yeah, yeah. Um, so, so I'm going to come to you. Um, I'm going to come to you. I'm going to come to you. Was it me on mute? No, it was Neil. No, it was Neil. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, man. So, so um, sure. I'm gonna come to you now. And what do you think? What do you think about the game? Uh, Liverpool. Uh, for me, uh, it was obvious. You know, when it comes to Liverpool, Chelsea, and Man City, those teams, man, we expect them to win, like. Even if they play with a lower team or one of the strongest teams, so for me it was kind of obvious, like Chelsea's game. So yeah, and just to add or to offer them, Nyana, like what Sim said, man, you know, Klopp, or Klopp did like amazing job, like amazing things, and still doing incredible things with Liverpool, cause man, he knows he signed players that suit Liverpool style, and the players that he signed. They don't even, or maybe he's lucky or something, I don't know, because he just find that missing puzzle. And then that player just, he doesn't need, those players, they don't even need to adapt. They just become there, they play, they deliver. Like, like look, the signing of, they, they signed Jota, and Jota just, just delivered from, from, the, from day one. Jota, Jota's been scoring. And then he signed like Lucas Diaz now. Lucas Diaz signed like five days. I think he signed him like 
in the next five days, he started playing and he delivered every game. And and now also, he, he's, maybe maybe he could see that maybe Salah and Mane, they're going to get tired along the way. That's why he bought Diaz. And now he's, he's able to rotate his front three. And because against Nottingham Forest, they played Jota, Firmino, and Elliot. And Salah and Mane, they were not in the starting lineup, maybe because of an international break, or maybe they needed rest. So for a team who does that, so you know that Klopp is going for a triple, a possible triple or quadruple, because, man, these guys are playing very well. And the players are coming back, the injured players like Oleg Chamberlain is coming back, and they have Timikas. Timikas, man, is a good player, but the problem is he's playing alongside Robertson, and Robertson is a good player also. So, yeah, what Klopp is doing with Liverpool, man, uh, these guys are still going to dominate a lot, like Chelsea. Because, man, the squad rotation, the signing, they're just perfect. Not like, for example, Manchester United. Our signings, man, we don't, they're not delivering. So, they're not, they're not quite there. Maybe they need time to adapt. But when it comes to Chelsea and Liverpool, those guys, they sign. Like it's like they look for that missing puzzle, and then when they get that player, they deliver from day one. So mm. yeah, like on the weekend game, Liverpool was kind of obvious that they're going to win because of the squad depth and because of the coach club and the great players there. So yeah, I mean for me it was kind of obvious for me. Yeah, and kudos to club and Liverpool man because they are still going to dominate man. Guys, okay. so nah man um. Obviously, awesome stuff. I don't know if Mesh is back because um, he told me that he was uh, he was gonna rush off somewhere. But yeah, man. No, I'm if you're here, yeah, I'm here. Okay, awesome stuff. Um, I mean, pretty much straightforward. What's also said, um, you know, um, Liverpool are just a well-run club. Um, you know, the owners m- might be more stingier than even the players at Man United, but. You know they, they they still have football and people making good decisions so um i mean just you know tell me you know about the liverpool um victory may and, the, and the, yet again liverpool are in an, another cup competition they, they they further in the competition and you know their season is just you know the, it's looking very scary you know they have, they have an opportunity of winning the champions league league title and you know they've already won <laughs> you know They've already won even the 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 the, the, the Culling Cup. You know, it's it's a, the Carabao is as as obviously we say now. So I mean, quadruple is there for them to win it. Who's to say it's 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 impossible because they they're getting over the line. They know how to get over the line, even though their squad depth isn't as good as Man City's or Chelsea's. So um, please uh, do um, elaborate further on, on on their result and their season. Oh, yes. I think uh, Celso put in some good points here. Uh, I, I mean, the depth mentioning um, U- Luis Diaz coming in, like slotting in like a glove. And then also Jota went away for um, an injury. He comes back, he scores a goal. Uh, yeah, they seem to have a rotate, rotation is working and everyone just keeps getting the goal. I mean, um, your money and Salah are a bit quiet now. Salah comes in with a penalty on some of the league games. But then, yeah, they've got good depth. My worry is them uh, defensively. I'm not sure if they've got depth. Like you mentioned, Man City as a reference. Man City rotates players like nothing, and yet they still get the results. So, yeah. But then, uh, yeah, looking at the game, it was a, a tight game. Um looking at how they scored on the 78 minute but yeah looking at the stats obviously uh there was no danger for liverpool you just wanted to watch the game and see how uh nottingham forest will, will end up but yeah um quadruple i'm not sure treble i'm not sure it's a, it's tight ties at the in the in the champions league although in the champions league they play the as um, it benfica the the portugal club so 
easier tie compared to everyone else. So yeah, they they should get an easier route to the semis. Uh, but yeah, we'll wait to see the FA Cup ties. Um, and then on the league, there's still a lot of football to play. I mean, it's them. Uh, Celso also mentioned Chelsea always being there, and then Man City. They've been unfortunate to not get the Champions League last year, but you know they're always getting the. Carabao Cup, they're always getting the FA Cup, they're always getting the league, so you can't write them off. Yeah, Liverpool is one of the contenders, strong contenders on all the competition, but yeah, there's still a lot of football to play. Very good to see. And with the Man City game, I mean, they won 4 uh, 1. They seem to be scoring a lot of goals, whether it's Champions League or it's FA Cup. Uh, coming back to the league, they seem to have struggled because they're dropping points, but yeah, they won 4 1 this past weekend, um, with Phil Ford and getting another crack off a goal. Uh, yeah, and then just the Everton game, just to wrap up the FA Cup. Everton, Crystal Palace, I'm not sure it's um, uh, what they call Lipa Palace from their win against Newcastle, uh, which was a, a very surprise. And then they come back and win and, and lose 4-0 against Crystal Palace. Maybe the focus is on the league just to survive the league. But yeah, um, um, yeah, Vieira getting, I think Crystal Palace is also a good team as well. Getting four goals against Everton, yeah, that's quite a boost for them. So, yeah, um, we'll remain to see Chelsea, uh, Man City, uh, Liverpool, the big guns, and then there's Crystal Palace, the odd one um, in the top four. We'll see in the uh, FA Cup going into the into the ties as well. Let me unmute. Let me unmute again. Um, <laughs> awesome points there, man. Um, obviously, um, we, like the the man, we don't need to say much about City, you know. And you know, it's pretty much as um, Mesh said, you know. Um, obviously, Crystal Palace getting the 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 win, or is it Crystal Palace or was it? Yeah, it was Crystal Palace four nil. Um, threshing Everton and Lampard seems to be under pressure, obviously, for that, but. Um, Man City also beating Southampton, pretty much straightforward. Uh, two Premier League teams. Man City again in another cup competition, challenging again. And you know, obviously to wrap it up, guys. Um, quickly, uh, just give me a quick, quick view. You know, Mesh already has already said what he needed to say with in terms of the City and Crystal Palace. What did you guys think about City season so far? You know, they, they, you know, it's it's so easy for Pep, but you know. They're still in the Champions League. They still, um, they also need to focus on the league. You know, uh, Liverpool. <laughs> they still gotta play Liverpool, even though you know the it's Liverpool could be one. They're already one point, isn't it? One day they're one point behind, if I'm not correct, at the moment. So, um, what do you think? Um, do you think City is sort of they 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 are, they've got an undivided attention towards the the Champions League and then you know these cup competitions or they just feel like they can just sacrifice the league this season because for me it looks like they're not priorit prioritizing it as much as they did in the beginning of the season it looks like they're just slightly falling off um and yeah man I'm gonna start with Sims obviously and then Celso. So I think oh, Sims is, pretty, is experiencing network issues. Yeah, uh, it's fine. Can, uh, so yeah, can, yeah. So, so just, just, just uh, say um, a few things about City, and then, and then I'll come back to Sims for a few, and then we'll move on to the La Liga side. Okay. So I don't think City they're trying to prioritize everything. You know, Klopp he loves winning. So. For me, I feel like maybe just a poor run or they were unlucky. They, were, they, they are they're currently unlucky. Unlucky because when it comes to City men and Pep, we know Pep. Pep wants to win everything. Everything. So I don't think he's prioritizing anything. So maybe just a poor form or they, even if, or maybe they're unlucky like, like the game they played against Crystal Palace. So they did get chances hitting the woodwork twice. So uh, that day, <laughs> luck was was not on their side. But what I do believe that Pep wants to win everything. 
Okay, maybe Champions League can be the priority because this team never won, according to my knowledge. So, but I don't believe that Pep is prioritizing anything. That guy, he's a born winner, he's a leader. And I don't think maybe in the changing room, you'll tell them that, hey, guys, let's prioritize Premier League and let's do this, let's focus on this. Or even maybe, you know, sometimes as a coach, when you're trying to prioritize something, as a player, we can see that, no, coach is trying to prioritize something. And we want to win because everyone wants to win. Winning a Premier League means an achievement. Winning a Champions League will be an achievement. So maybe come end of the season, maybe City can win a treble, we don't know. But as far as I know, Pep, he wants to win everything and he likes breaking records. So I don't think he's prioritizing anything. Just like maybe they're just having difficulties to adjust their squad or balancing like Liverpool or Chelsea. So yeah, maybe... Maybe there is something will come up. Maybe they need some extra boost or maybe trying to promote or try to rotate the squad because Grealish is not playing very well. So maybe that's why Pep is busy playing a lot of game, like giving game time to to Brian to try to change things because Grealish is not playing very well. And Jesus, there's some players that even Bernardo Silva, I feel like me, is getting tired because every game week is playing. So yeah, I just feel like maybe. Those players are getting tired. Pep needs to come up with something. But prioritizing, I don't think Pep is prioritizing anything right now. For sure. Um, Sims, can you quickly, quickly give me a rough... Uh, obviously, uh, who was supposed to go with you first before we went with Celso. Um, what do, what's happening with City, man? What do you think is happening? Are they... You know, um, do you think they're prioritizing other cup competitions ahead of the league title now, or they, do they do you think it's it's just a matter of uh, like what Celso said? Uh, he's um, Pep is just going for every every trophy. He's not prioritizing anything specific. Well, uh, I agree with what Celso said. Uh, there's no way Pep is prioritizing which trophy he wants to win. I, I do believe that he's going for every trophy that is at his grasp. He's just going for everything. And the only thing that is a uh, the only thing that is sort of let me see if they were to compare Ferguson with Pep, because I've seen people do that. The only thing that is a difference between Pep and Ferguson right now is that Pep has never won a treble in the English Premier League. And re- this time around, he has a chance to win it. I mean, he's been failing with the Champions League. He has a chance to do it, to win a treble in modern day football. As much as uh, I'm not a fan of his, because of also the team that he coaches, but he has the, he has that oppo- opportunity, you know. And with what CT they are, are doing, they have so many players. Like so, so what, like what Cecil mentioned, when certain players are not playing up to standard, they always have a player to cover up and do it. You know, like uh, they have, a, I don't know how many players they have in each position, but you can clearly see that when one is off the, 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 the game, other players will pick them up. And at times you won't even see that they're not playing properly. So I, yeah, I see, I foresee City winning two, if not maybe three trophies uh, this season. Because like I said, there's no way Pep is choosing which trophy he wants. Uh, maybe it might have been, like Celso said, might have been, uh, luck, luck was not on their side, or the other teams were better prepared than them when they dropped those points. Could have been that, you know, because it doesn't matter if it's a pep, but if another team is better prepared than you because they've seen how you play, they can, you know, isolate the right points that they need to use to win the game. So, yeah, I think it's a matter of unluckiness, but in terms of going forward, I mean, he beat a uh, what's this, a English Premier League team 4 1. And not just an English, an English, uh, English team, a big one in terms of how they they've been playing this season. So we didn't just beat any team. So yeah, they're looking good. As much as I hate to say it, but they are. Nah, um, awesome stuff. Is there anything you wanna add, Mesh, before we move on to La Liga quickly? Nah, man, I think the guys have wrapped up uh, exactly the points. Uh, so nothing much on the FA Cup. But yeah, uh, we can't write off that Man City with Pep. They want to go for everything. There's no cup. I mean, 
they um it's them the Carabao Cup has been seen as a um, or rather hasn't been seen as a big cup but Man City has made it a cup to go for every season because other teams have been playing um your B team your C teams but Man City each and every season they always go for that cup uh go for the FA Cup go for the League Cup so now nah, they will go for every cup there's no prioritizing when it comes to Pep yeah I think FA Cup will see the ties uh, semi-final ties as they go Nah, awesome stuff. Awesome and brief. Um, obviously, moving on to the La Liga, um, there was the El Clasico, obviously. Um, uh, b- before the El Clasico, Atletico won their game against uh, Rayo Vallecano. Um, important points for them in their top four, uh, you know, chase. And they still fourth, um, with Pass obviously third. But, you know, Sevilla again dropping points. And it looks like, you know, Barca could move into the second spot if, you know, Sevilla, I think eventually Barca might finish second. Um, yet again, Sevilla is dropping points. I mean, it, it was expected that they might not um, finish, you know, in the second place. You, you always thought that, you know, with their squad death or maybe just that inexperience of being in that position might, might let them down during the season as the season goes by. But yeah, obviously, um, the big game that we're touching upon, guys, in, in, in La Liga is the classical Barca again with the master master performance. You know, um, it was kind of expected because, you know, obviously with, with, with uh, Real Madrid miss, uh, missing their talisman, uh, Karim Benzema, you know, he literally dug them out of the, the, the Champions League during the midweek. You know, um, you know we... we, we and I thought PSG, to be honest, I actually thought that PSG were going to go for. I think most of us predicted that, including Sims and, and you know, even Celso was like, ah, no, I think PSG, PSG might go through. So, um, guys, what did you think about the classical, you know, dominant performance, Xavi masterclass, Barca on their, on their way back? I mean, Celso must be pretty happy. Um, I'll start with Sims and then I'll move to Celso and then Mesh. Afterwards, uh, yeah, well, uh, I think last week, um, when we spoke about the La Liga, I did mention that I am very afraid of what Xavi is, is, is building and the way they are pushing that already. They were fought, and I think they were dead sharing the, the position with Atletico or something. From what I've seen from him, what he's been doing, he's been very smart. And I, I won't lie to you. I think I did mention that I'm very afraid for what's this, the, the Classico. I was excited, yeah. But the way I've been seeing Barcelona play, the way I've seen even the new players that have gotten there, your Apumayen, your Dembele, someone who's been injured, and it seemed like he was in, on his way out from Barcelona. But having someone that is familiar, I'm, I'm guessing, has helped him out a lot. If the youngsters are pushing, it's like the old Barcelona uh the pep barcelona yeah that's how they are looking they playing they pressing like i was watching that game yesterday last night they pressing madrid couldn't do anything they, 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 they did not even have time to do what they they usually do so i see that benzema not being they might have also affected them i mean i mean they are captain their leader cruz was also not there but at the same time the way barcelona were closing down and quick with the ball to go forward I feel like it would have been the same thing. Maybe we would have scored, you know, but I feel like it would have been the same thing because the way we've been playing, you know, in Madrid, they start from the back, they build play. And if a team presses you from even thinking to hit those long passes, it makes it hard for you to actually get forward. And they made it very hard. They pressed, they won the ball very quickly. Immediately they won the ball, they went forward, you know. So that's why I'm like, I the way they are playing right now, uh, I think they will uh, finish second. Because Sevilla keeps dropping points. I mean, they've been dropping points. I mean, I know their squad depth is not the best, but at the same time, they have players like Martial that could have done better things with him, putting him as a as the leader in France as well, changing it up, you know. But uh, yeah, dropping points and Barcelona seems to be pushing and pushing, you know. Um, um I hope nothing crazy happens where Real Madrid starts dropping points because they've done it before. I don't remember what year. I think they were still coached by. Uh, Mourinho, they started dropping points and then Barcelona managed to win the league. So they can't start dropping points now. 
So yeah, I'm hoping that they they get on it again and win. But yeah, yeah, Clasico Barcelona proper smashed Madrid. And I'm a Madrid fan saying that. Let me unmute this again. Uh so, so um obviously man, um, I'm sure you are overjoyed with that and uh, crucial oh, victory for yeah. Barcelona. Crucial victory for them again and overall good performance and dominance as well from them. And, you know, obviously um, with even with Real Madrid missing, you know, um, you know, your Karim Benzema and Tony Cruz, as Sims was saying. Um, but did you expect them to go and beat uh, Real Madrid 4-0 at the Santiago Bernabeu? Or what, you know, um, and what did you think of the performance from Barca? Sure, sure, Neil. Uh, you know what, guys? First of all, I'd just like to thank Arsenal and Arteta for letting up me and go because that was... <laughs> they give us a diamond, man. A diamond. African diamond. So, yeah, I mean, Arsenal really messed up yeah, letting go of Amiang, even though they're doing great, but Aubameyang, man, is, is a quality African diamond. So, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I expected... Pass between around, let's say, 2 nil because of Madrid, because those guys are good. Madrid, they are good. They have experienced players. They have, they have good players, good wingers, and a great coach. So, yeah, I was shocked by 4 nil, man. But, hey, man, it, I was overjoyed, man. When I, uh, after face up, when, when we're leading 2 nil, yeah, like Tim said, credit to Xavi, man. And teams also did say in the last, yeah, the past podcast when he said that Barca now they're starting to become a threat, and he's showing right now because the squad is clicking, they're playing very well. Aubameyang is jailed in, Ferran Torres and Dembele is playing very well, no injuries because I mean that guy gets injured like a, like like a, like a kid man. So yeah, so it's great to see Barcelona coming back to that old Pep style. And credit to Xavi, man, because hey, the, in the beginning of the season, man, I, I expected Barcelona to finish top eight. Maybe maybe they couldn't reach top four, but now things are going very well, and and there's a great chance that we can finish number two. Yeah, but uh, and also I don't I don't see Madrid dropping points today, because they they experienced enough. They've Modric, they've Toni Kroos, Benzema, and they've. Uh, one of the best experienced coaches in the game. So I don't think them dropping points. They will win the league. Yeah, that's obvious. But Sevilla, they'll drop points. But I'm really disappointed to see Sevilla dropping points because, man, they've been playing very well this season. They've been playing very well. And, yeah, it's it, it just sad to see them dropping points right now. And Because in the past 10 games before, yeah, they were they, they won the title race with Madrid. But it seems like now they mm -hmm. and they've blown they've blown their points, so they're losing games. Maybe they're trying to prioritize, I don't know, but yeah, I'm just disappointed to Villa, but Barca, man, yeah. Barca is coming back. Yeah, sorry to Madrid fans, man. I know now you're also a Madrid fan, right? <laughs> ah, listen to you. I'm not. I just follow Real Madrid sometimes, you know. You are, man. You and teams. I know you guys, man. Uh... Yeah, but it is what it is, man. Um, great points from Sal. So um, I'm gonna let Mesh finish off this one for for us. Um, obviously the game, you know, Barcelona dominated uh, the game. Like I said, they had sixty position, uh, sixty percent position. They had eighteen shots on target. Um, eighteen shots on, in, uh, completely, and then they had ten on goal. They had three corners. That um, you know. Um, so it was an overall dominance from Barca, like um, from from start to finish, and Real Madrid coming off obviously a strong comeback victory from PSG might have also um, kind of added a disadvantage to them maybe because um, obviously they had to rotate heavily, um, and Barca obviously have had an easier ride in in the Europa League. It looks like they might just win that one again. But yeah, Mesh, um, what did you think? You know. Um, what did you think of the overall performance from Barca against Real Madrid? And obviously, what's what's Real Madrid's stance? Do you think they're going to drop points, uh, more points, and then it's going to allow more teams back in it? Or do you think they just have the good experience uh, in, in terms of Toni Kroos and Luka Modric 
and Karim Benzema um, to 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 lose the lead at the top. Now I think what Cecil just mentioned, uh, yeah, um, I think yesterday's game was also a wake up call for them because I think uh, they've had an easier ride this whole La Liga campaign with Barcelona having uh, Kuman the coach. Uh, they've struggled themselves. Uh, Atletico had a bad start themselves. Uh, I mean, you're seeing Sevilla on second position. They can't even uh, keep consistent. But yeah, I don't see Real Madrid uh, dropping any more points. Yesterday's game was a wake-up call, so they should um, uh, be awoken. And uh, also going into the Champions League, uh, I think they will make sure that uh, they keep their La Liga campaign alive while focusing on the, on the Champions League. But yeah, yesterday's game, uh, Sim, I did remember Sim mentioning um, last week that uh, he does see Barcelona as a threat. And uh, yeah, Barcelona's game um, performance yesterday from the start of the game, they had plenty chances. Uh, I think uh, Thibaut Coutoua, at the start of the game, he got the award for the player of the uh, of the month of February. And uh, at the start of the game, it proved why he got that, because he got a couple of saves against Pomeyang and uh, Musa Tembele. And uh, yeah, that kind of kept Real Madrid on the game. But yeah, um, Apomeyam eventually got the goal, which is having a rich form uh, going into into Barcelona. Like Fish mentioned, um, at Arsenal, uh, yeah, they, they actually lost the time on there. But yeah, Yavi is uh, putting a good team against the uh, day at Barcelona, which we shall see um, them competing against in the Europa League and also uh, going for the second spot in, in La Liga. Yeah, so we'll see. We'll see. But yeah, looking at the other games on the La Liga, it was a mixed bag. Um, Atletico getting that one nil victory, three point was important with their captain Koki getting the goal. Uh, and then um, with Cadiz uh, surviving, trying to survive relegation by getting a one nil victory against Villarreal. And then, yeah, with the Sevilla game, um, Drawing 0 0, I think them traveling back from London after playing West Ham that 120 minutes kind of, yeah, um, sucked them some energy. That's why they didn't have the, the that, that game, but obviously they can't sustain that second position. But yeah, the big game of the of the weekend, um, the El Clasico, Barcelona getting 4 0 at Santiago Penapao. I think that should give them a boost going into the Europa League campaign and also going for the La Liga. It seems uh, the last nine results they've gotten uh, positive results, so it's a it's a good comeback for 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 Barcelona going from Kuman to Yavi. And yeah, the performance yesterday just actually cemented everything that has been a change there. So yeah, looking forward to seeing how the La Liga com- uh, com- commences, but exciting for Barcelona in the Europa League as well. Now, awesome stuff, um, and yeah, man, uh, looks like um, La Liga, the second place, might go to Barcelona because you know, when I look at it, um, you know, they're one point behind Sevilla now with a game in hand, so you could see Barca just getting that, that, that um, three points in their next game that, that on that game in hand. And I pretty much think that Atletico will get fourth, so um, Sevilla will, will obviously don't have the squad depth. Um, and you know, to to over the long period of time over the season, to to all to finish second, it was always going to hurt them eventually. But um, overall, good uh, good. You know, it's it's been a good show, guys. And you know, um, I'm I'm surprised we managed to cover so much um, in such little time. But um, it was always great to have you guys again on the on the Monday. Uh, night football podcast it's the seventh one that we have um hopefully next week we we have another one but you know it's the international break obviously um so you know there's no there's no there's no football to discuss for a while but you know um we'll see we'll see what 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 happens uh, next week guys um obviously uh, you guys tell people where to 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 you know um uh, Sims, uh, you can always tell people where to follow you on Twitter or if you're on Instagram, because you know everyone has their favorite. You know everyone wants to you know engage with you guys individually as well. From what I've heard, so um, Sims, where can they follow you? Bro? Uh, well, they can follow me at uh, Simcard 
Monk. Uh, on what's this? That's uh, uh, Insta and then on uh, Twitter. It's a uh, yo. You see this this social medias. You can't be can't be by surprise, but yeah. Oh uh, yeah, I think it's also SIM card if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, but you can't be by surprise. But I remember that the Insta one. I think yeah, SIM card Monk uh, underscore. But yeah, I'll remember it and proper come with it. But yeah, yeah, you call me Pastor Braza for God. Eh? <laughs> also, um, awesome stuff. So, so, uh, where can they follow you on Instagram or on, on even here on Facebook, man? I promise Facebook and at Leso Football TV. Only, uh, yeah, you can only follow me on those two stuff only. Me, I'm not on Twitter. <laughs> All right, man. Um, Mesh, man. Um, obviously, you um, you've just joined us recently, man. Um, and people actually like like um, your views as on, on the channel as well. Um, where can people like engage with you? You know, on a personal note. Okay, on Facebook, I've been uh, a bit quiet, but I'm I'm actually frequent on uh, Twitter and Instagram. Uh, actually, the name on here, Doko Mesh, is actually also my handle on both platforms, yeah. So, yeah, they can just uh, follow that. But, yeah, I'm a big f- uh, football or sport uh, fan. So, yeah, they should follow me on that. But, yeah, just to mention, uh, this coming weekend, it's uh, World Cup qualifiers for both Africa and Europe. So, yeah, uh, there's actually quite some uh, beautiful football going into this weekend. So, uh, Africa... Um, World Cup qualifiers is those final ties, and also in Europe, um, you know, the tournament trees with uh, either Portugal or, or Italy or actually on the same stream. So, yeah, we're looking forward to going into that. So, that's uh, worth discussing last week. Uh, I mean, the, the following week, although we may not have our predictions yet because, uh, yeah, it's going to be um, first legs or, or first game of the qualifiers. But, yeah, there's mm-hmm. still a lot of football to discuss coming next week. Awesome stuff, man. Um, um, we'll see. Like, um, I'm gonna be also checking out the the, the one more point. Okay, cool. Sims, do you wanna? Yeah, Sims, do you wanna remember, say something? No, I wanted to say. I just remember the Twitter one at Symphony Monk at Symphony <laughs> underscore Monk. Yeah. You know, next time I'm sure we'll have the the thing is popping. You know, when someone sees something, it just, just pops there on the side. Yeah. Um, awesome stuff, awesome stuff, man. But but I'll just leave um I'll just leave the links in in in, in the description, you know, um so that everyone can just check check it out for themselves. It's not a problem, really. Um, but yeah, guys, once again, great um discussion. Can't wait for the next week podcast again. And during the week, I think we should have. I think on Wednesday, guys, um, if any of you guys are available, you can come join me on the men. We're going to have a men talk because there's some serious, serious things we need to discuss in terms of Manchester United. They're, they're obviously, they haven't, um, um, what shall I call it? They haven't played a game. So, um, but there are news circulating. There's a lot of news that could impact this with the future of the club. So, um, men talk Wednesday. Um, we, we all things Man United, all things um, whatever, and then the next week podcast, guys, will be discussing merely, merely the, the the games that take are gonna take place over the World Cup qualifiers. You know, there's Portugal, there's important games like Portugal, whether they're gonna make it to the you know the World Cup or not. You know, there's crucial games, to, um, and who knows? We 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 we'll have that discussion, guys. But yeah, thanks, guys, for tuning in. Um, once again, and thanks to the guys for making it very easy for me again. And we we will see you guys next week Monday, same time. Obviously, not the time that we had now, um, because obviously for 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 network <laughs> for network reasons, you know, uh, Streamyard. I'm gonna have a word with Streamyard about this. But uh, next week, hopefully, at at um, twenty two to seven. Every Mondays, catch me, Sims, Deco Mesh, on the list of football TV Monday podcast. Thanks, guys. Happy to be back home. Good, Jen.
after 12 years. Good game, man. A really good game. Like I said to Martinelli. Hello, Antonio. Nice to see you again. Hello, good afternoon. It's gone through that fort. Rodri! Good save. Good save. Good save. Good save. Dieser Lewandowski-Auftritt sorgt für Wirbel. Looks like you lost another one.